Alright you guys, so this is the start of something new I'm doing, which is the Mofo See That Mini review. So this is a separate video because part one will run a little bit too long if I combine both of these together. Oops. And so this will be the start of my mini build where I would build it in real time and not uh, fast forward it. So I'm hoping to do that once I buy like Gapcom stuff or like um, stuff that I won't buy in any expo that will be included in that list. So like the Arms Micron from Transformers Prime, those definitely get a real time build during the review. I'm not sure whether there will be separate videos or part of the review itself. But okay. So, let's see. This is the B part, which is a the inside, see the face, looks like the shoulders and the eyes, and the base displaces and the rest of the body. Now, the one thing that, uh, the downside of it is that there is no stickers. If you want this to be accurate, you have to paint it yourself. So you have to actually go over paint these green, paint the outside of it black, paint the inside of the antennae gold without it having to bleed over the sides. So it's not accurate to the pictures, but it still will be very interesting to see. So let's start. This is double sided. It's only about um, 11 15 parts to it. So let's start with part one, which is actually taking out the antennas and sticking them together using uh, various parts. So let's get the antennas out first. So I will try to talk as much as possible without ruining the kit. Ooh. Because since it is in real time and I'm getting sick of doing two hour long builds. Let's see how this goes. So this is how one half of the wing is. This is the one, the full joint in it. The other one also has it. That's for a different reason. And yeah, since the video is not in like fast forward, you can tell I'm actually using uh, like salon clippers for like dead skin and stuff. That's because I don't have a regular file to which to build with. And actually, these work pretty well for me, so I don't really have the need to buy a Tamiya set. So this one, this one's interesting. It's like the AV joints, except this is solid white plastic instead. Let's see. The same as the PC-10, where it's a circle, but the f top and the bottom are flattened out. So basically, I take a 16 and then I need to line the straight edges together properly so it's like that and I plug in 17 together with it hopefully it stays together so you can already see that since it's a transforming base, the horn doesn't really stay together. But 
that's fine though. Let's take a look and see the plastic we can trim. Ah, that sucks. It looks like I cut a little bit too much off of this side. But it's not going to look that nice. Oh well. It sucks. I'll flatten it out a bit. It's a little bit noticeable, but not that. If you look close to it. Alright, now next we need to cut out the A5 and A4 parts to it, which are located right here and here. Let's cut out A4 first, because there's a special way you need to put it on the horns. There we go. So it says here that the curved side should be facing the front as part of the horn crest and this side should be in the back so it plugs into the head. So this one, it's on a oval shape, although the plug is a circle. It's interesting. So it can like swivel up and down and left to right if it needs to. It's cool. Not the most secure fit, it's just don't fiddle with it too much. And then A5, which just looks similar, except if it's for the front head crest. Half of it, I guess. Alright, and so, it plugs in with this part sticking out the back. It also has a oval shape to it, the hole. Nice. So then these two will stay stationary, and that allows the horns to operate independently from each other when the head's all built together. Alright, and now we're going on with the right side, the head A14, which is right here. Which is interesting. Because it's the middle of the head, basically, that each the helmet halves together. It's so basically it should be like this. This is the front. You see how each the top and the bottom should clip in. That's nice. I'll make a secure fit. Let's see if we can get it together without it falling off like that. Yeah, alright. So let's try to see if we get the bottom in first then. And of course, now that I'm trying to do this in real time, I'll get the most problems out of it. That's fine. Let's try doing the bottom first. It should go in better. Alright, and get it as straight as possible. The bottom is a lot more stiff than the top is. It doesn't slide in as easily. It seems straight enough for me. Here. And now we're working with the top and the bottom. A24 and A26 are located right down here 24 and 26 let's start with 26 it seems like it would be easier to put on now this seems like if it's uh, the base of the skull the base of the helmet it's a round piece of here. And then so it should fit between this right here. Kind of see where it should go in. 
is it should go in right here in the middle. There we go, and secure fit. Now for the uh, head crest for the helmet. Alright, so now the teeth, I'll call it the teeth, from the bottom should be sticking out like here. And then you should plug in here, there's two slots here. Hit these two slots here. So try to see if you can get them in the proper order. There we go. And then it pushed the horns out a little bit, that's fine. So here you have the head crest. And now you have the face. Now we're using parts B. Let's first get out the uh, mouth plate. And then you can do what I do, and you can just combine it with the face beforehand. So it would just plug in right here and just plug into place. It's the outline of it. And I gotta be more careful with these. Because colored plastic, especially translucent one, tends to break and leave way worse stress marks than regular solid plastic, so you should be careful about that. You know, always look at what you're doing, make sure you don't cut off wrong pieces. And now, you take the head, the eye portion, to be specific. And if you want to know how to learn just using these, you gotta apply like even pressure so it doesn't snap. So now there's this cross plug in here that'll connect to the base right here. Get my fingers out of the way right here. And so you connect it like that. And it gives more of a snap to the place you see. They have the outline of where the eyes should be. But there's no stickers, so you need to fill that in with Gundam Eye Green and then make a mask, black mask around it. And now, using these two slits up here, you need to connect it right here per the instructions. And so, thus, you connect like that and then. It should look like that. Don't know how the gimmick will work so far. Yeah, it's at the angle. So now we need to get A20 out. Just the gigantic fused part of the head here. Careful cutting out the curved parts because you try to do it too straight, it'll leave a much bigger stress mark than if you just cut it curved. And then cut the middle part, keeping it steady with the other hand. Clip it out. So I'm assuming this should be the back the crest. So it says here, you need to push the horn around it first before we plug it directly into the scalp. Because this needs to be under like this. Now we 
plug it in somehow. Alright, made connection. So now this is what it will look like. I don't see not perfectly straight and the rest of it should be fixed. So now I'm going to put in the small joints in. So A12 and A13 looks like the Vulcan things that need to be put on the side of the head here. So let's do that first because that seems to be the more tricky part. So 12 and 13 are right here. See how small they are. So those are going to be really tricky. Getting it properly. I'll just do one at a time. So I really don't want to screw this up and lose one of them. Let's see where the connection is. There we go. And just do it gently so it falls down and doesn't snap anywhere. Alright, so now my fat fingers. Alright, so it should be looking like this where the plug is sticking to the bath. And thus you would plug it in right here there's little slots on the side. See the shadow? Let's try to get it flat. And then try to get it in the right way. Close. Let's move it a little bit to the there we go. And see how it should curve into it. And that's how it should look like. Alright, and then the other side should be the same thing. It's interesting they didn't mold it in. I suppose there'd be too much surface area to it, but okay. And then the more complicated process. Especially if you want to test your skills as a gun plot builder. Also skilled enough to get it on here. So that's friction. So again, this one should stick to the back. Now we put it to the so it's very small. I would recommend you use like tweezers or something. Get these in if you're not sure about it or you don't want your pieces to slip away from you. Keep everything straight as you can. And now A23 is this piece down here to finish off the crest. Now, said so this part should be facing down since the bottom. And you plug it in right here. The connection point. Right here. Good. So for unicorn mode, it should be more like this. It swifts down for the antenna. I guess it's not the most secure connection, but it'll do. And now, you need to connect the rest of the head parts together, B1 and B2. We'll start off with B1 because it's the plug. They're both this is the receiving end and this is the connecting end. So you put in one first easy to plug into. Of 
That's a nice large piece too. Then this big hole should be out in the back because it will connect here. So then it should look like that. Oops. The piece is not that secure. It should be a three free moving part. They should also like stick in here for it. Right, now the last piece for the translucent plastic. Now the other side. Make sure all the holes are going to be connecting together properly. Try to get it in straight. There we go. Don't be afraid to put some pressure in it so it's a tight joint. So this one actually swivels out a bit on its own. It's interesting. So let's see. And now a 19 and a 10 for the unicorn mode. So this is the face plate for unicorn. Now, a 10 right here seems like the jawline. It kind of looks like it's going to be the swole point for the entire thing. Let's take a look. It's a connector point. Alright, so this plugs into that. So make sure it's in there properly. It's going to feel a bit loose. But should be down like that. Actually, so it's a better connection. So it's like that. So that it's on the bottom of the jaw. And then you connect it. To the this part right here, right, and then that's the end of the front. So I'll connect you, and then I need to switch out the memory card. I can show you the back, All right? So then now we need to push this out and just try to push it in somehow because I'm pretty sure this part should there we go so it should look like that see a little bit of the red out here okay it's still a bit weird because then I don't know if it should be like that Let's finish it out, change out the memory card, and I'll be right back. Alright, quick memory card change later. Now we need to continue on. So now we're on the back side. So now we have the completed thing. So basically, the thing is, I'll grab it by the horn so it'll be easier. So this flips out, and this flips over. And apparently, jaw should just this doesn't fall out of the freaking thing should st stay plugged in 
And this should just go in under it. And it'll look weird like that, but I don't know. It's just... Because then you can kind of see the eye should be here too. Uh, er. Alright, so that's this way. And now we putting in the back. So it'll be easier to freaking move it. This this giant piece right here. Make sure you're cutting it straight as possible. And now this should be the top part of the back. And now you need to to go under and try to plug it in somehow because these slits here there's slits here so you need to push that in I guess it doesn't really clip in so that's how it should look the inner part still looks kind of weird alright so let's get the side pieces out and then you need to put steps inside so I'll do A2 and A3 inside the side pieces before I take them out so let's start the left the right side so A2 to A22 A2 is right here so this looks like a side vent A22 is this part. So then it's facing us like this. Then, okay, it plugs into the side. And then it should look like this. This is the side it swivels into. Should flip in right here. And plug here. Yeah, it's a side vent. It completes the side. You can look here. So it's empty. Now with that, the full side vent. So that's nice. Also seems a bit odd why they would make it a separate piece and not mold it in. But that's just me. It's fine either way. So now this one also slides in quite well or as well as possible when you're trying to do it with one hand with stuff in it basically you gotta get both sides in here Not sliding in properly. There we go. There we go. And now just get the right side out first. Now this one, this one's a thick. I just gotta pull it. Coming together quite well. Another thick piece. All right. Let's do the right side first, and now these side vents are in. And so you put the whole peg into the hole, and that should be that. It should give you a nice solid place, and then we'll, it fills it out better. Hides more of the red. Now I see it should be like that. Just have the head space in it. And then this should flip around. 
for the other side of the head. And plug it in. not quite as exact as how you would want it to be. It should be fine. This one bends out though. It's weird. Alright, so that's the head and now you be connected to the base. So the rest of this is just the base with the body. So now we need to plug in A8 ball joint for the neck and plug it into the base. Let's get a 8 out first and see how we plug it in. So basically the ball joint goes in here and it slides in on the sides, the top and the bottom there are bridges that uh, correspond to this. So you push it down I guess. Then it should be like that, but I'll take this out so I can make a better fit when I have a better grip on it. That's basically how it should work. Goes into the ridges. Yes. And then I need to pop it in. Push it in properly. There, and then you hear that little snap. It's nice, there's the rear, I think this is the neck front part. So let's leave that here and let's work on the ladder part for the display. So A6, which is the top part where your gun claw connect to A7 in the middle with one half of the swivel joint already in here so you can connect here and here you can see it's on a, a ratchet when these two connect because of the gear here so you connect this and then well it's not an actual ratchet it's plastic so you have to This should be like that, then take a while to take it off completely so you can switch it to another gear. So leave those off until I find the right angle that the base should be on. And use the most thick part. Of course, that's where most of the support is going to come from when it plugs into the base. So now get the final part, the main body, looks pretty cool. Main base, that's pretty cool. The top part of the chest, should you get here, yeah, it's the front part of the neck so it should look like that. You should plug in like this and you get full neck range up and down side to side a bit stiff now this part swing out this one's also a gear so I'll have it at a slight angle and I'll have this this angle so it's straight up so it should resemble something like that and now um, this hooks onto that now you should get it on properly there get this and now if you look at it it has very red 
it makes it look very more menacing than just the green eyes. So now this is unicorn, unicorn mode. You get it to the, I think it's very complicated. You take out the side pieces and the horn part out. That prevents it from moving all the way. Remember what order they are. And so you push, use the horn, so you push it up. And so the Gundam head releases. And you push it. Out and in. Out and in. So it shifts up like this. And then. You shift this part. Up a bit. I guess. Or down a bit. I don't know how to read that part. So as you shift it up. Whatever. I'm going to move this part down if I can. In the full. I'm trying to use the full roll of the thing. Oh! You shift this up, so then it'll give it more wiggle room because it shifts along with it. Okay. Okay, that's kind of cool. So then it's like that, and you can see where the eyes is, are. And so that, then you need to shift out the antennae before you can plug in bottom part of the horn or the crest back in properly so then it doesn't go off again so you see you have to paint this side and then now you take the sides and you switch it over so now it's part of the mask make sure you line it up properly and now the holes on that side expose cycle frame inside so that's pretty cool now for the other side make sure you have it lined up properly or else the side vent pops out so basically here it is pretty cool and so that's how it would look as that now obviously you can buy like yellow gun plum marker and just change that up it's going to be more difficult for the eyes though it's a more difficult challenge but um, if you like unique display bases such as this I think it's worth it I don't think it was that much of a price difference from the added um, head display base from Dengeki uh, magazine compared to the original Destroy Mode release. Well, this is it. This is the mini review. I will see you guys later. Check out the rest of the playlist and other videos on my channel.